y'all what's up your girl g here welcome back to my channel appreciate you for tuning in i know i have been mia this past week first of all let me acknowledge the fact that it's a little it's a little dark in the room okay i'm gonna let y'all know right now it's literally raining right now okay in texas so it's not so much light that i can go over there and record currently at the moment um it's starting to peek through just a touch so maybe when i go to review love and marriage huntsville y'all would be able to see me a little bit better but we're just gonna talk about um love slash life after lockup because it was like a lot happened but also not at the same time you know um so yeah just wanna you know hopefully i'll be able to edit it so y'all can see me just a little bit better but we just we just we just gonna talk y'all okay we just gonna get into it and chit chat a little bit um so yeah like i said y'all really apologize that i wasn't here the past week i just had a lot going on um you know my body my mind my what is now now my mind so you know my body's telling me no okay that was that's what was happening um uh, but let's go ahead and get into um love slash life after lockup so i can go ahead and talk about all the other stuff that's going on too and play a little bit of catch up okay so first things first y'all let's go ahead and knock out melissa and louis long story short uh louis mom comes in you know melissa and him are super nervous about you know obviously telling her that you know they're engaged so melissa doesn't say nothing first when they walk in she's like you know i just don't want to go in you know bursting at the seams smiling you know i'll just wait to see you know if they catch on so as they're talking obviously louis mom is like uh excuse me <laughs> what is this on your finger and she was saying you know melissa was like guess what he's my man my man my man and you know the mom of course is like hey yo like first of all the ring is nice louis did a really good job on the ring um and so the mom's like can i see it and the both melissa and louis were kind of like why and she was like to throw it in the river and she was obviously being sarcastic but she's like nah to look at it so she looks at it and everything the dad obviously already knew that this was something that was in the works you know melissa's uh louis mom just did not so you know she's just kind of like oh my god you know i'm losing my son and louis just like why do you what is all this you know losing me chat you know like you're not losing me mom so she gets up and goes over there by the balcony she drinking getting all emotional stuff like that and you know melissa and her are talking and she's tearing up and she's basically like you know I don't like you. <laughs> and Melissa's like, huh? Um, and she was like, you know, I talked to, you know, my, I think she said her sister and I think it was her mom, I think it was, her mom and sister, if I'm not mistaken, or niece and sister. And she was like, you know, but they love you and things like that. And she was like, but I think the reason I don't like you is because, you know, you're so much like me. And Melissa took offense to that, but I was like, ding, 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 nail on the head. When you really truthfully, honestly think about it, Melissa and Donna are two sides of the same coin. And now Melissa, she want to sit there and be offended. Of course, she's like, you know, I would rather her just say she don't like me, you know, than to compare me to her. But I was like, Melissa, you really do act like Louie's mama. You really do. In an essence, like you are super controlling, you hover over him, you constantly are like trying to, you know, um, not necessarily control, but mitigate his actions and things like that. So, you know, <laughs> y'all are more alike than different. And so she was like, you just remind me so much of me. And like, that's why they do butt heads. But, you know, the mom's concern, you know, when she's talking to the producers outside, basically is like, you know, I just... I just don't want my son to get hurt, you know, if, if, you know, he's so in love with her and I'm just worried that if he falls short, you know, she's not going to be there to pick him up. And I was like, that's kind of a crazy thing to think, think, seeing as she literally has been with this man since he's been in prison. Like she literally has put money on his books, like doing visits, like she has been there for every part of Louis falling short, you know, but also mom you can't sit there and judge her if she does decide to leave louis if he if he is falling short it's not the problem of him falling short it's him falling short and not doing the getting back up himself you know a woman can only help a man that wants to help himself and if louis is falling short and is not doing anything about it you can't hold that to melissa to decide to leave that you know that's not fair um 
But as of right now, though, you know, you can't sit there and say that Melissa hasn't been for your son, you know, Miss Donna. So Louis finally comes over and he's just like, oh, you know, what's all this chit chat? What are y'all talking about? And basically she was just like, you know, I love you. I'm so proud of you. You know, I'm always going to worry about you and everything like that. And he was basically just telling his mom, look, you know, it, it she's like, I just can't let go. And she's like, why should I let go? And he's like, because it's time. And Louis actually is very quite, um introspective and he very he he seems to be very um <clears throat> emotionally regulated I guess I'll just put it that way because he understands like the reason his mom is that way at least he's honest enough to be like I know she's that way because of all the things I did to her you know she has been there literally since day dot of him struggling with his you know addiction and things like that so you know, they basically just kind of have, you know, a good little mother-son moment. And Donna basically is struggling to let go, but she got to do it, okay? Um, so moving on. Um, another person that is struggling. Ooh, hold on, y'all. I freaking took this medication. I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back. God dang. All right, y'all. I'm back. Sorry, I had to take a little quick bathroom break. Your girl's on this medication that's flushing fluid out my body, and I'm literally having to pee every god dang 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and try to wrap this review up. So let's go ahead and move on to the next couple, which is um, let's go ahead and do Troy and Zuri. Y'all, <laughs> Zuri's crazy. Point Blake period, she crazy. And guess who else is crazy? Troy Mama. She called him literally out the blue talking about uh we got a problem you know come pick us up and he's like what do you mean she, she's like i'm here with your daughter she been wanting to see you and we just took a train and he was like you telling me this now like as i'm on the way out like now and she was like well i don't know what to tell you and so basically they gotta pick up and go get her and you know as he's taking you know his son uh Isael to you know the science little museum they pick up the daughter and it was cute to see like you know the boy and the girl because they both have been saying the same thing of like oh you know I would love a sibling so you know basically with this going on Troy is getting to finally really blend his family together and so it was really nice um watching that they were hugging each other and I think they'll definitely be uh able to adapt to each other very easily the only thing i'm concerned about is because the daughter is so open to troy and to being a little sister to isaiah isaiah i do feel like the baby mama is going to struggle with that y'all because one obviously being a mother but two she's not going to she's going to feel like the daughter being so open and willing to blend you know, obviously with Zuri and her son, she's going to take it as, you know, personal. And it, I, I just I just fear she's not going to really adapt to that well, um, especially with the phone call that she, she had with him um, when they got back from the science museum. So basically, you know, the mama was talking and was like, look, you have to get some sp figured out with your two women's because, you know, you got these kids is, is co-parenting. That's really important. Like, what's up? And he basically acknowledges like, yeah, you know, I just got to sit them down and we just really got to, you know, get it together because what's important right now is the kids. So they make it back. Um, and basically, you know, Troy is putting on that little community center, community meetup or whatever. And uh, he basically is trying to, I think, either invite the mom or, you know, basically he wants the daughter to come, but knows that the mama, by virtue, is probably going to have to come too. So Zuri kind of takes it personal, like, why would you do that? Like, why would you bring an extra, you know, variable into the equation that could really, you know, F it up, like F up the thing. Shout out to Funky Dineva. We trying to have a day that is two plus two equals four, not, not three X plus four X equals Y. We, we need the math to math on that day. And this extra variable is not going to cut it. So I, in this moment, I'm really needing Zuri to realize the only way she messes it up is if you allow her to mess it up. I think Zuri is so focused on like, the baby mama that she's not even realizing like you're really the one who is more in control of messing this up than she is and Zuri is so emotionally triggered so easily that be the problem but he was like look you know I, I'm trying to be a dad like I want my daughter to see that her dad is coming out and doing good things and finally Zuri gave in because it also was like their anniversary as well so he called the baby mama. He was like, look, I need you to do me a favor. Like, can you bring, um, you know, my daughter? 
And because when he was like, you do me a favor, she's like, what? And I was like, already like, oh, Lord, <laughs> here we go. Um, so he was like, look, you know, I want you to bring, I want you to bring her up here or like, at least let me have her. You know, I want her to see her dad's doing good things. And she just kind of like, is like, okay. He's like, you going to do that for me? She's like, yeah, Troy. And I'm just like, I really feel like she's going to have a hard time adapting to seeing Troy, one, doing a lot better, accomplishing these things. And then two, watching her daughter actually mesh and meld with Zuri and not feel like it has anything to do with her or you know try to poison that i i don't want to say like oh she's a bitter baby mama it's not in that essence she just is going to struggle letting her daughter go in the regards of not just troy but zuri you know um but yeah zuri the only way the baby mama messes it up if, is if you allow her because if anything girl your attitude <laughs> Your attitude be the one that that's, that's dangerous, if you ask me. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on, y'all. So another attitude that's dangerous, Bianca. Y'all, y'all know I don't ask with Bianca. I don't. I don't. I don't. And so she's over there um, with with Daniel in the bed. His back hurt from packing and all that stuff. She burning eggs or whatever. And she they're basically just talking about stuff. And so she lets him know that, hey, you know, I just we just got to talk about things that we need to do better on. Uh, because he brought the fact that he's going to do a double date with, you know, his homeboy Gator that he also was in prison with. And so she was like, well, you know, how do you feel about doing, you know, kind of like a little intimacy therapy you know because there are things we got to work on and she is determined to bring up like the sex is trash like basically long story short the sex is trash i think she got with a prison dude thinking she was getting ready to get that prison zeke okay she wanted that prison zeke but he daniel ain't giving it to her but i'm also feeling like bianca you're giving him mixed messages because literally last episode you were like you know i want to be you know uh like Basically, you know, she want to be roughed up a little bit. That's literally what you said. You know, I want to, you know, uh, be taking control of and things like that or whatever. And so you're saying that, but also at the same time, you're coming back and being like, you're just too rough with me. Like, you know, I think Bianca has a, I'll just put a say, a domestic, you know, past relationship. And I think a part of her is attracted to that bad boy essence. And, you know, once that but she wants that out of one she being toxic and two that's all she know so it's like but when it happens though I think it brings her back to a place of trauma I think it like it's like she feels like she wants this thing but then in the midst of it happening she realized oh no no I don't like it I don't like it and she really has a lot of shit she, she need to work on um and so yeah they basically are gonna do that and she let him know that last minute, as well as the fact that the friend was coming. He was like, oh, when's she coming? She's like, tomorrow. He was like, well, damn, when was you going to tell me? And she was like, well, I'm telling you now. So obviously he's nervous because, you know, at the end of the day, the friend got questions. Okay, shout out to Wanda. She got questions and she was asking very valid questions. But remember, y'all, Bianca said she just jealous. Okay, she's just jealous because she ain't going to be living life and she only going to be here stuck in these four corners of this state of Florida. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's where she's from. So they go to the little sex therapist, intimate therapist or whatever. And she basically, you know, has them straddle each other and they're doing like um, just basically kind of like opening up questions, you know um what do you fear the, the things you're most thankful of like what do you love most about me and Bianca basically says that she's scared he's gonna leave her and I just kind of feel like he's scared that like his fear was oh she doesn't see the potential in herself that I see in her and it's like also as well she's like I'm afraid that my drinking you know is gonna mess up the relationship which is super crazy because it's like on the outside you're so defensive when people tell you hey you're drinking you're drinking but to know that she's thinking about it like hey you know my drink is gonna ruin our relationship I think it's just really kind of like weird I think she doesn't like being told anything like criticism wise because if you're thinking about how you're drinking obviously is messing up when people say that like why is it your immediate reaction to get you know like bite back at them and bite their head off so I really feel like she just 
you know, like I said, she young and don't want to be told what to do. And she, uh, she'll, she'll know it's wrong, but continue to do it because she just want to do what she want to do. Ain't nobody finna tell me otherwise. And that's the problem. Um, and she wants what she wants when she wants it. Literally just like a child. Um, so they get done with that. And, oh, the lady was like, what y'all's, um, uh, title or something like that. And she's like, fiance, he like girlfriend. And see, Daniel, this is where you effed up because, you did propose to her while you was locked up and now you come outside like well hey you know I didn't really mean it and he, you know we're not engaged because ain't no ring so obviously they're in the confessional she was like uh you know well you did it you know he's like but there's no ring there's no ring and Daniel's trying to basically like <laughs> like convince himself like they not proposed because ain't no ring you know like or that they're not engaged because ain't no ring and it's just kind of like that's not how that work bro it ain't but also Bianca stop rushing like she's in this idea of like oh that's not fair like he's like all the things I've done for him and like you can't even do this for me like that's a problem Bianca you thought you were gonna buy your way into a, a, a relationship obviously because she's like after everything I've done you know flying here he just doesn't know what I gave up like but you decided to do all that you can't do all those things and then be like well because I did all those things like then you should propose like Obviously, yes, if you're a woman and you're, and you're committing to doing all those things, yes, like the idea is that you're going to be in a relationship with this person moving forward. But you can't be like, because I did those things is why you, I, you know, you're going to give me a ring. That's not how that works. You know, because I did those things, like I'm supposed to now get a ring. Like that's, that's not how that worked, Bianca. So they end up going out with his friend and his, and his fiance. So obviously, you know, that caused tensions. She looking at the ring. And she's like, oh, you know, so pretty. And Daniel's like, yep. <laughs> and so then um, the friend, they go off to the side. And he basically like checking on, obviously, like, you know, what's up? How y'all doing? And he was like, you know, I love her. He's like, but how do y'all do living together? He was like, I knew she was the one because of how well we live together. And he was like, yeah, see, that's where we butt heads. You know, we we don't live together quite well. And the truth is, y'all don't. Um... And so she's talking to the fiance and she was like, oh, you know, asking questions. But the thing is, the fiance and Gator knew each other before he went in. So there's a little bit of a difference. Um, so when they sit down, here's the thing too, Bianca, she don't like nobody that questions her or like pushes back on her thought process. And so when basically they're talking about like, oh, you know, what's going on with y'all? And, and she bring up the ring thing and she's like, you don't even care. Like obviously you don't care and Gator was like well you know um uh before commitment you really should you know try to live together and Bianca looked at him like nigga what like uh no like no and Daniel pushed back and was like well you know I agree with him and Daniel you just got to put your foot down on this situation like she is looking for such commitment to feel like she's not stupid for doing all the things that she's done but you're not just going to force that out of him, Bianca. Like, it's not going to work that way. Um, and you throwing a, a bitch fit about it isn't going to make him propose to you any quicker. In fact, it's going to make him retreat and go the other goddamn way. So when she gets up, like, oh, my God, like, I don't like this. Like, no, like, like, so seriously, like, I'm so over it. And she throws the fit that she does every single time somebody pushes back on what she's saying. It's like, she was like, I don't like, I don't like Gator. Of course you don't. <laughs> of course you don't. Um, I don't like Gator. So you know what? Later. And so he sends his fiance out there to get him and or get her. When she runs outside, basically he tell him, huh? run. What's that? What's that uh, little sound effect on TikTok? Run. Dun, 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 dun. Bitch, run. But Daniel ain't going nowhere because he ain't got no money. Okay. And Bianca is his sugar mama at the moment. And Bianca is looking for every reason not to, to confirm that she is not getting played. So that's why she's forcing that fiance ring situation so much because she's trying to feel like, I hope I didn't get played, but bitch, that's on you and you can't put that on him. Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and move on. All right. So let me think of the other couples. Who else do we have? Um, Justine and Michael so the mama come y'all y'all know the mama house burned down and so now she's in Vegas and they stand up and was like surprise 
ding dong baby okay shout out to Bernie Mac <laughs> um and so the mom is like wait wait like what like girl you got this big ass baby like wait a minute what what happened and so she's like are you excited like are you mad and she was like no no like and so the mom is talking to producers and she's just kind of like you know I just knew something was up, you know, like I knew I needed to be here. Like, there's no way, you know, she's like, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. You know, the fact that I'm here right now after everything that happened, it's clear, obviously, that they need help and help indeed is what they need. No, oh, that rhymes. Help indeed is what they need. Okay. Um, so she's like, girl, you got this big old belly. And so the mama is in the house, you know, clearly scoping what needs to be done because she wants to help. She's like, I'm here, you know, to help. So she's like, okay, you know, laundry, I'll do that tomorrow and everything like that. And Justine, she's just downstairs talking to Michael. And she basically lets him know, like, if you see me go upstairs and kind of hiding, like, don't take it personal because, like, I'm overwhelmed and this is a lot, you know. She's like, I love Michael's mama, but I also know her, you know. I know at some point, like, I feel like we're going to clash. She's going to say something smart. I just know it, you know. And so Justine goes upstairs and the mom is just kind of like, okay, you know, look, I saw that over there tomorrow. You know, I'll do your laundry. And Justine kind of just was like, you know, and she's like, well, she's like, well, no, like, don't do it. And I think Justine is kind of feeling like with the mom at helping also, she's probably feeling like, a little judged but also like the house is in disarray like let's just let's just call it what it is y'all got eight going on nine motherfucking kids and he's always at work girl you pregnant and high risk so you're not going to be able to do everything just like the mama said like you can't do it and so justine's sitting there upset like oh you know you know how i am but girl you got yourself in this position you know and so Mom was like, look, girl, like, I'm here. I'm here to help. But also, like, let me know. Whose idea was it to to not tell me? And she was like, it was mutual. You know, like, we both just decided not to do that. And y'all want to sit here and say, like, oh, it was about y'all, you know, trying to maintain whatever bubble y'all are living in. And, yeah, that's a part of it. But the main part of it is because you know, y'all know deep down, baby number nine was not the move. And I think Justine is one of those women who doesn't believe in terminating pregnancies. So it's easier to convince themselves like, hey, eight is great, but nine is fine, you know. But I, I, I don't think this was definitely something that was purposely done but you know they're being adults and have and, and handle it if terminating pregnancies is not what you believe in and what you do is you if you nut up you gotta buck up okay and that's what's happening but that's also why she don't want to tell her mama because now the fact that michael's mom knows and then her mom don't now the mama you know his mama knows like oh girl that's gonna be a problem that's gonna be a problem and she's like i just know how my mom is you know and the mama shoots at justine straight and she don't want to hear it because the last time she got pregnant, mama told her what what was real too. And then Je Michael want to sit there and say some BS like, oh, it's in God's hands. Like some it's above me now type stuff. Like, uh-uh. What do you mean it's in God's hands? No. Having a baby at the time that y'all did and everything, like it, it, it wasn't smart. And, it, and for y'all to do this shit again... And y'all are already, as in the words of Michael, finances is, is tight as an ant's butthole. What well, nothing about this smart, okay? Um, but y'all are here. So, like I said, if you're going to nut up, you're going to have to buck up. So, at this time, um, we just going to have to see, you know, how it goes for them going forward. You know, Justine just kind of tells the mama, like, look, I don't want to be a thing if I say something to Michael or the kids. Like, you're you know, cutting me off or saying anything. And she was like, no, you know, if in front of the kids, I won't do it, but I'm gonna pull you to the side though. Like you still gonna hear me though. And so I can at least respect that. Um, but yeah, we just got to see next week what it's like when she ended up telling her mama. Um, so I think the last couple is Melissa, not Melissa, Kim and Joey. I'm trying to think that I do everybody. Um, Justine, Louie, Zuri, um, Justine, Louis, Zuri, and Justine, yeah, hold on, let me think, y'all. Justine, Louis, Melissa, Zuri, and Troy, 
and I think this is last with 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 Kim and and Joey. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and do Kim and Joey. I, I, I I'm trying to remember if I did forgot anybody else. Um, but Kim and Joey now they looking at this house and they they want the house. Okay. Um, Joey, he on that stuff. He on that stuff. He on that stuff. They go to, you know, they trying to do everything they can to get this house because Kim is the only one making money. And the crazy part is Joey with his old lazy ass. He, you know, he want to be like, oh, I'm going to ask the dad. And she was like, no, like you going to ask the dad, like you need some responsibility in this. So when he asked the dad, the dad said yes, but he's not doing it for Joey. And he know Joey ain't finna pay his ass back, but he's doing it for his grandchildren. And Joey, you can sit here and try to, you know, make all these promises. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to do it and everything. But the truth is, you struggling to find a job. And then at that, you trying to be picky. Joey in the confessional having the nerve to be like, you know, I'll find a job, you know, as long as it's something, you know. He's like, when I picture a job, you know, it's something that make a lot of money and, you know, something I want to do. And, you know, that's not going to have me, you know, tired and, 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 and waking up, you know, when I, when I, when I want to. And I'm like, wait a minute, like you, you clearly aren't getting this. You don't have no room to pick and choose Joey. And then when y'all go to the bank to open up a bank account, because obviously they need one for, um, for them to get the house i do appreciate that daddy was like i'll give you the money but he ain't finna be on that deed and i, just, I look daddy you think you're smart okay i absolutely agree with that joey don't need no no ties to nothing okay um so when they go to the bank you know they asking questions and everything and she was like well you know he don't have no credit or nothing like that he's just getting out of jail and so they need to download the app. And so Joey's phone is in the car. And she was like, well, go get your phone. He was like, well, I can't find it, you know. And she was like, well, why did you not bring it in? He was like, man, so, you know, just not making a big deal. Like he was slurring and stuff. And so she was like, man, just go get your phone. And so when he go to get his phone, she talking to the bank, tell her like, now look, like what's the limit on this? And he was like, it's 2000 a day. She was like, mm -mm. We, she was like, I can't do that. So he's like, look, what we can do is put alerts on there. Anytime, you know, a budget or something is spent, you know, we can do it that way. Then also as well, you know, he got asked, oh, you know, do you want to do the overdraft? And she was like, uh, uh, no, cause Joey's going to do nothing but overdraft because he doesn't care about the money because it ain't his money that he's spending. And then have the nerve to sit there and be like, oh, you know, whether you want to admit it or not, being a drug dealer is a job. You know, that's hard, you know, being a drug dealer. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it may be a job, but it, it, it's something that's on your terms. And that's the problem. Joey don't want to be told what to, to do. Um, so when they leave, he want to stop by the goddamn stereo store. And she's literally thinking to herself, like, here we go. Like, we just got out the bank and you are already looking for some, for some way to spend money. And he justifies it by being like, you know, I just want to do, you know, do something for me. You know, like I, I just want to do, I, can I just do something for me? You know, and it's like, no, you can't do nothing for you because one, you ain't earned it. And two, it's not yours. It's not yours to be doing something for you, Joey. And so he's like, well, I ain't doing nothing. I don't know why you so upset. And she was like, we know what window shopping goes for you. Had she not been in Mary, Joey would have went in there and spent that motherfucking money. Like you sitting there window shopping for shit, one that you don't need. You don't need no stereo system. Um, and two, it's like he's purposely just like doing it because you want to feel justified and having something for you, but it ain't your money. Like you don't get to sit there and be like, oh, you know, I, I, I deserve something too. So then work for it. Work for it. That's the way you do that, Joey. So she gets pissed off and she leaves and... He's walking out, want to be upset. She's like, let's go home. Like, take me home. And he's like, no, you go home. And so she's driving. He's trying to walk and he call his friend. But she ends up picking him up and they go back to the crib. And the mom is there and this boy go to take a whole nap. And the mom is just kind of like, why are you taking a nap? You know, and so they go out back and Kim starts crying like, I think he's doing drugs. Like, uh, you know, is he acting different to you? 
and the mama can't say for sure. She was like, you know, I've had these moments where I've had to hope and pray and, you know, be like, Lord, like, it, it, just like, take the wheel, Jesus fix it, you know? Um, but Kim is just like, you know, with the mama saying, saying that it's like, she don't know. It's kind of like y'all have suspicions, but y'all ain't got no proof. And so it's the whole next day. She was like, you've been sleeping for like 12 hours. He was like, oh, word. And so he's like, I don't feel good. Like, I don't feel good. You know, give me to emergency care. So she called a doctor and they asked for the Medicaid card. And he's like, oh, you know, I think it's in the car. So she's like, okay, I'll go get it. When I tell you Joey ass got up so fast, you ain't been able to get up this whole motherfucking time. But now when it comes time to get in that car, what I tell you when Kim was like, okay, I'll go get it. He's like, you ain't going to find it. You ain't going to find it. She's like, just tell me where it's at. You ain't going to find it. That boy got up so goddamn quick. And he, he goes to the car. Obviously, he don't know where shit is because he's so unorganized. And um, Kim is just sort of like, I don't know why he won't let me go in the car. <laughs> huh? And so she's like, you know, he, he can't be on drugs because like he not throwing up. And literally, as she's saying that, he in there up chucking, Okay. And, um, she was just like, I just really hope like he's not back on drugs. And so he's like, I'm finna go to urgent care. She's like, well, let me get dressed. I'll go with you. No, nah, no, nah, just like, just, just, just like, just let me be like, let me be by myself. And it's like, but you said you're going to urgent care. Like, why would you not want somebody to assist you to urgent care? And so that's why it's giving real thumbs up, you know, just, just, just let me go. Like, let me, let me, let me go. And it's giving you, you finna go do drugs. And Kim is crying because she knows nine times out of ten, that's what it's given. Um, and so I think that, yeah, that's where the episode ends. I can't think of nobody else. Um, God dang, I got to go to the bathroom again. Y'all, y'all know what to do. Like, subscribe. Y'all drop in the comments so much you feel about the episode. And I will catch y'all later. Deuces.